Well, this snowstorm was a bust. We were supposed to get four inches, you know, we had all these warnings, the TV was making us scared to death, just like always, and uh, I think we got a couple inches. And uh, this is a typical central Indiana storm uh, where we've got to hurry up and, and plow the snow before it melts. So <laughs> that's what we're doing today. We are going to show you Vinny in action here with this leaf plow and see if we can make it work. Um, and we're also going to show Johnny's rear blade because we have to get the concrete plowed off here in front of our house. It's supposed to get cold, so we do need to get that off because otherwise it just turns to ice and gets very difficult for us to deal with. Let's get started. First thing I want to notice is from making that last turn there, I need to put some weight transfer back on the tractor here. I think uh, not having any weight transfer is not going to allow me to turn. So if you want to understand the weight transfer better, uh, we put out a video about that a long time ago. Uh, we'll put a link to that episode, assuming we can find it, um, in the description below and up here in a card. But suffice it to say, it transfers the weight from the attachment to the tractor or the other way around such that you can, you can either put down pressure on your attachment or allow your tires to have better traction. We need the tires better traction today. You want to do Johnny first? The snow is really wet. Um, this is you know, not a real challenging uh, snow environment because it's wet, but on the other hand, it, it, it is so sort of challenging because the snow doesn't kind of roll off of the blade very well. Uh, it's just kind of chunking up. Uh, like I said, we really feel like we need to get this off of the concrete right here because we're on the north side of our house and it, once it freezes, which it will refreeze tonight and then it's going to stay cold all week, it just becomes a sheet of ice. So we got to get that off of here. This blade's doing a great job of getting all the way down to the concrete. It allows me to even take out some of the tire tracks that I, that I put in with the truck earlier um, before I had time to do this uh, snow removal. I've got the blade at an angle. Uh, it's not working perfectly in that some of it's still going over the left end. I could probably take a little smaller swath each time maybe and stop that. Uh, but it's, it's working and it's working well enough. Now there are several other solutions that we've shown on this channel uh, to do snow removal. We've shown a uh, just using the front bucket um, with the with the tilted down right and back dragging. Uh, we've shown uh, a snow pusher, or in this case, it would be tilted forward and and, and be a snow puller. <laughs> uh, we've shown a front blade where you can sometimes back drag with a front blade. That can work. One good thing about this solution is if you already have a heavy hitch or a two-inch receiver of any style on your tractor, you can get this rear blade for not a lot of money. It's uh, somewhere around $300. Uh, I don't know what the exact price is right now, but it's not a big addition to uh, the, the cost of your machine. So if you don't get a lot of snow like we don't here, um, then you know this, this blade might be a good solution. You get it at heavyhitch.com. Coupon code TTWT will get you a 5% discount. Yeah, let me keep trying it. One obvious disadvantage to the rear blade is that it's behind you and you, you have to look backwards. Well, I'm noticing here today that that isn't so much of a disadvantage because I don't have to watch it that closely, right? I only really watch it when I'm going backwards to, to begin to get another, a, another pull here, right? So I'm not having to be turned around all the time. For the most part, I'm driving forward when I'm actually working, so it's it's not really a problem. Um, not near as much so as some of the other machines, like that stump grinder, which I feel like I have to be watching all the time. Now, another disadvantage that a rear blade has, if you're working with a bigger snowfall, 
is that it can push up snow under the tractor or toward the tractor here. You can kind of see it here a little bit. You can be getting that pile of snow up under your tractor and you can get it to where you can't even get any traction because your tractor is what we would call high centered, meaning that uh, the pile of snow is, is keeping the tractor off the ground. Maybe that'll help exaggerate this point of the, of the snow pile in the middle of the tractor. Now I want to show you another option. Remember these blades provide a lot of flexibility. I'm going to wheel this blade all the way around, make it facing totally backwards. So I was just explaining about how you could get piles of snow up under the tractor and become high centered that way. This is a way around that. This is also just another technique that you might want to use. And so we'll take the rest of this just for an example and we'll push this backwards off to the side of our driveway. By taking maybe a half a swath or so, I can avoid anything coming out over the uh, end of the blade on the on the end that I am trying to keep totally clean. I should mention that this uh, cab really does help. It's a fairly windy day, and I'm certain Christy's not happy to be out right now. But uh, it takes the wind off, and then as the tractor warms up, once the hydraulic fluid gets warm in this transmission, it's plenty warm in here. Now this backwards approach makes me look backwards more, in contrast with the statement I was talking about earlier. But it may give a little more control over how to use the blade. So I'm going to try the edge tamers here. Now there's a lot of different ways you can handle this. I mean, the most brute force way is just to drop it down into float position. And that's where I am here. I really think that's a little too much weight on the bucket. So I usually like to pull it up out of float and control it myself a little bit. Okay. So I'll step back here. I haven't seen the results yet because it's under the tractor. Oops, I dumped out a lot of the dirt that was in my bucket, didn't I? Oh well. So you can see that on some of the, where we went, the uh, it's totally gone. And other parts, there's like maybe a half an inch of residue left on the ground there. So I'll get another, another bite here. Now we'll go out on the rocks. And those edge tamers really do help. I'm running right out across the rocks here, and I'm not picking up any. Uh, that's, a, that's a good example of what the edge tamers can do for you. Edgetamers.com, 5% off with coupon code TTWT. I've got three four-inch edge tamers on right now. Um, I have sometimes run with as little as two three-inch tamers. Uh, I, I think it helps to have you know, as much width as you can have. Obviously, I've already got the snow removed here, but I'll give you a close-up. Yeah, I'm wondering if Vinny will get some of the rest of this cleaned up. Now remember, this is a leaf plow, not a snow plow. But hey, I'm willing to try anything.
Okay, what I'm discovering is I can put it in float here, Christy, and I've got the weight transfer set to one, so that means most of the weight of the leaf plow is still on the leaf plow, just a little of it coming to the tractor to help me with traction. The leaf plow's not very heavy, so it doesn't have much weight, so I'm actually going to go down a little bit further than float. So see if you see what I did there. This is float, and then I can push it down just a little bit further, put just a little bit more down pressure on it. And maybe that'll let those bristles get that concrete clean. Well, what that does is it gives me a little bit more control. So I can use the float, or I can raise it up a little bit. Like if I happen to get into some rocks, I could raise it up just a little bit, or I can push it down a little harder, like like I was doing in this last. Yeah. So now remember, we also have some control there. You can see on the back of those gauge wheels. Look at all those washers. All that's adjustment for where those gauge wheels run. We've tried several different settings. I don't think we've got it perfect yet. But it may not get perfect. It may be as good as it gets. Hard to tell where the rocks are. Well, I got a large pile. Yeah, that's the weight transfer issue. Okay, what do you think? Well, it's not really meant for a snowplow. No, it's not meant for a snowplow. I think some of it is lesson, though. I mean, the, figuring out how to do the weight transfer right and keep from spinning is yeah. somewhat skill. Um, I do think the way we've got this thing arranged, it's it it allows it to slip more. Okay. But this snow is really heavy. It's heavy and very wet. Yeah. And a, it started precipitating again. Not a good example. Yeah, no. this is, uh, as we said at the, at the top of this episode, this is a bust. We expected four inches, good heavy four inches of snow. Yeah. Can we go inside now? I guess so. Your cab's not working as good. I uh, know. Yeah. I noticed that you always take Johnny and the cab. Hey, I'm not silly. You never even offered me that. I think I'll pull my cab down a little over my ears right now. Yeah. This this was not a very good test for us. So But it was you, fun. You guys need to wish us some more snow. We need we need Wait. more snow. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's raining right now, so it's not very pleasant to be out here and so I yeah. think we're gonna go in and maybe have some hot tea or hot chocolate or something. That sounds good. I hope you guys are on the couch where it's warm right now. Yeah. We will be soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim. You want me to go up or you want me to go down uh, with Tim? Hold on. It's not pinned. Oh, shoot. I'm glad I didn't get in there. Hang on. This cannot be in the video. It doesn't need to be in the video.